Hey guys, it's Sydney Galpern from SeeMeCakes.com and in this video I want to show you how to make this avant-garde isomalt butterfly cake using Simi transfer sheets and Simi isomalt. I'm going to use some of my favorite products and methods to create this crazy chaotic butterfly explosion on a hand-painted model. I've been dying to combine some of these elements all together into one final showpiece, so come with me and let's make some cake! I'm starting out with a fondant covered cake in a base color of a pale yellow. This cake is huge, it's 8 inches across and 12 inches tall. I don't even know how many layers it took me, I think I lost count somewhere in between. I like to do a sketch of all of my cakes before I start just to get an idea of what I want to do. This cake is based on a watercolor painting I did, inspired by a few different pieces of art I've seen and I decided I really wanted to turn it into a cake. So once I got a basic rendering of all the colors and the design that I want, I used that as a guide and sketched the design onto my cake using a food marker. I'll use this as a template to know where I'm going to put my edible paint. Just gonna move over here. Okay, here we go. The first stroke is always the hardest, but I'm just gonna go for it. Ah! Is that too pinky tone? It's a little pinky. I want an undertone of pink, but not too much pink. That doesn't look any different, does it? <laughs> To paint on the torso of my girl here, I am using powdered colors. So these are petal dust or elite colors, and these are going to mix with some alcohol. So I just use vodka, but you can use any kind of clear alcohol or extract that you would like. And that is going to paint on very similarly to watercolors and give me that kind of sketchy look that I'm going for. I'm not going for super perfect here. I like to see those brush strokes and the depth in that color, and it's gonna allow me to layer the colors and mix colors to create my own custom effect. The more liquid to powder ratio that I do, the more translucent and lighter the color will be. The more powder to liquid ratio I do, the more opaque it will be. So I do play around with that to make varying shades of the same tone. Okay, here's where all my steady hand skills are gonna come in handy to do these itty bitty little ribbons. So I'm gonna be going over this in a lot of layers to build up the color and the shading but I'm just following my basic outline that I have set and then embellishing here and there where I think it needs it. I'm gonna put in some splotches of color. Is splotches a word? I think it can be a technical word in this. So I'm gonna put in some splotches of color and those are going to be the underneath layer for my butterflies. So that's gonna add some shadowing and it's going to make it look like the butterflies are really full. I'm just overlapping the colors onto where her face should be to hide the fact that she doesn't have a face. Can I just leave it like that? Does it need butterflies? She kind of just looks like her head is covered in pollen. Which is my head right now because there's so much pollen outside. This is actually a self-portrait. So for my butterflies, which is really going to be one of the main focuses of this cake, I am using a semi transfer sheet. So semi transfer sheets are really cool because they're essentially a type of icing paper, but they're not like regular icing paper. They're specifically made for isomalt. So what you do is when you pour the isomalt on top of the sheet, it absorbs into that really, really thin icing paper, and it's going to take the design that was printed out on my edible printer. Isomalt is a sugar-free hard candy, and it is going to work really, really well in humidity. It's already pre-cooked and tempered, so all I have to do is melt it in the microwave. It's super easy. It's very important to let all the bubbles settle out of your isomalt before you use it. So when it comes to a boil, you take it out of the microwave and you let it sit and cool for just a couple minutes until all of the bubbles that are rising to the surface are flat. There's no more bubbles in it. It's all completely still and no more bubbles popping and moving around. And that is going to eliminate any bubbles being poured into your butterflies. So you can see I have all my butterflies here. I'm going to pour my ice malt onto the sheet and use my silicone tool to just push it out to the edge. So you'll see that I'm not actually using any sort of form here or a cookie cutter around it or anything like that because ice malt has so much surface tension that I don't have to worry about it running over as long as I don't pour too much. 
So I just break this up into sections and I'm going to pour each section individually, spread it out to the edge so that it doesn't get too cool, and then I will pour the next section and continue until my whole butterfly is done. So I'm just going very slowly and very carefully. It does take some practice to get used to this because you don't have anything to kind of hold the ice melt in, but as long as you don't pour too much, you just need to push it out to the edge and it will hold and it gives you a lot of freedom because you could do anything. You can get these pre-printed with the design already on it, but you can also also get blank ones so if you have your own edible printer you can get blank sheets and print out whatever you want and that way you don't need a form or a cutter or anything to make these butterflies so I'm really just dragging my tool across the surface of the ice melt you don't want to scratch the paper underneath I'm just slowly pushing the ice melt where I want it to go you can see how the ice melt makes the colors in my sheet pop I'm using the smaller size of butterfly because I think that's going to fit my cake the best, but depending on your design, there's two different sizes to choose from. If there are any bubbles sitting on the surface of the butterfly, now is the perfect time to pop those with the torch. All right, so I just checked with my clean toothpick that my butterflies are completely cool. You don't want to use your finger, okay, because it could still be liquid. So test with a silicone tool or a toothpick or something like that to make sure it's solid. Then you can see the plastic backing just peels completely away, leaving the design that was on the transfer sheet on your ice melt. And it gives it that beautiful transparent finish, that awesome depth, and it looks really thin and delicate and realistic, which is the most important part for this cake. I do want to add a little bit of shape to these butterflies, right? Because we want it to look like they're landing. We don't want them to just be flat. We want them to look realistic. So I am gonna add some shape, but to do this, I'm not going to do it while it's still warm because while it is soft and it would bend, it's still liquid. So it's all just gonna slump to the center and I'm gonna have a big blob. So what I'm gonna do is actually let these cool down completely about five to 10 minutes, depending on the temperature of the room. Then I will reheat the center of the butterfly with my torch and bend it slowly using my fan to cool it in place once it's at the right angle. If there's any elephant skin in the center of my butterfly after it's completely cool, I can torch it away. I'm painting some black on the edges of my butterflies and that is going to bring the whole thing together. I do this from the back because it's see-through so it's going to soften the black so it's not quite so harsh. This is where you almost gotta get like upside down to paint the butterflies edges here. Before I put the butterflies on my cake, I am gonna spray them with a clear edible glaze. And what that's gonna do is it's going to lock out all of the moisture and all of the humidity that might be in the air. And it's going to keep my pieces shiny and keep them from getting sticky or cloudy. A really fun and playful medium that I like to incorporate and indulge in is cotton candy. It has a really cool texture, adds a lot of depth, and it's gonna be perfect for the chaotic look of these butterflies that we're going for. What I usually use for my cotton candy is ice malt because I always have it lying around, so it's gonna be perfect to use to make all of my cotton candy, and I can color it myself. But you can use traditional hard candy or candy floss sugar as well. After I melted my ice malt in the microwave, I'm just going to mix in a little bit of that same powdered color. I chose a yellow tone for this, and that is going to keep everything in the same color palette. Now the fun part is we get to smash up the ice melt before we feed it into the cotton candy maker. Ugh. Where I put it? Oh, I gotta make a cone. Did you make a cone? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I did it. First try. I can't take the anticipation. <laughs> I see it melting. Oh, with little tendrils. Yay! So because there's so much air in it, in between all the little strings and the floss, it does get a little bit lighter, so you can see it's not quite a bright yellow anymore, but I just want kind of an antique -y, very pale yellow, so I think this will be perfect. So um, when you're making cotton candy, just make sure that you don't get any underneath the little metal plate, um, because that's where it catches on fire and starts smoking as it is now. So, you know, just, just some little tips to help. Now I'll move this onto the cake. 
I'm using a toothpick dipped in liquid ice malt and attached onto my butterflies to help hold them on. And it's also going to sandwich the cotton candy in between and hold that on as well. This is all gonna go together like a big puzzle, just adding butterflies wherever I need it, piecing in pieces of cotton candy and figuring out where I want everything to go. I had a blast putting this whole cake together and I'm really, really happy with how it came out and I hope you enjoyed following along as I created it. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay up to date with all things See Me and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos and leave a comment and let me know what kind of things you want to see. Until next time, keep life sweet!